Yo guys, what's going on? It's Shane and today I'm going to show you how to access your home network from anywhere in the world. Now you can use this for a lot of things. You can access a server that you have on your network. You can be able to access your computer uh, in case you forget a file that you need for something. And it also just gives you a way to protect yourself online when you're out in public because you're using your home connection uh, to access these websites rather than the uh, coffee shops connection or wherever you happen to be. It's really cool and it's really cheap so I'm going to show you how to set it up. To get started, we're going to need a few things on the hardware side. So first, we're going to need a Raspberry Pi. I have the Model B, however any should work. And if you want the case that I have on mine, I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, and then you're also going to need an Ethernet cable. Now to get our Pi up and going, what we're going to do is we're going to connect the power cable to a wall socket. And then we're going to take the Ethernet cable and we're going to plug that into the Ethernet port on our Pi. Ethernet just gives better reliability and better speeds. You could use Wi-Fi, but I would recommend against it just because the connection isn't as great. Um, but once you connect with Ethernet, you're going to take the other side and just plug it directly into your router. Now the software we're going to be using on our Pi is called Pi VPN. It's a open source project and it basically just turns our Pi into a open VPN server and it makes it super easy to set up. So I'm going to go swap over to the computer and we're going to show you how to get it going. All right, to get this set up, we're going to need a couple of programs. The first of which is the open VPN client. This is what we're going to be using on our desktop to connect to our server. Um, and they also have a mobile app as well. This is how we're going to use it to uh, join. We're also going to need Pi VPN, which is what we're going to be running on a Raspberry Pi to give us the VPN server. And then you're also going to need FileZilla just to access the files and then PuTTY to connect to our server. I'll have links for everything down in the description below so you don't have to go hunting for it. All the links will be there. Um, but make sure all of these are installed with the exception of Pi VPN because I'm going to be showing you how to do that right now. But as long as these three are installed on your computer, we can get started. So we're going to open up PuTTY. And if you don't know the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, you can just type in Raspberry Pi. Um, and it should be able to find where it's at. I know the IP address of my server, though, so I'm going to be typing that in instead. But once you have that, you want to do it on port 22 and you can just press open. And we'll get this window here. I am just going to resize it for you guys so you're able to see a little bit better. So I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. And by default, the normal username is Pi. And then the default password is Raspberry. Uh, I've already changed mine, so I'm going to be typing that in instead. But you'll just run that. Now, first, what we need to do is we need to update our server. So we're going to run sudo apt get update and and sudo apt get upgrade. And we'll just run that command real quick. So as you can see, mine is up to date. So what we need to do next is set a static IP address for our Raspberry Pi. That way the OpenVPN server can work and it'll also help with port forwarding, which you will need to do anyway. So to access this file, all you need to do is just type in sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash dhcp cd.conf. And it'll bring us to this file. So we want to go all the way down to the bottom. And you'll see right here, you'll see your two interfaces. WLAN 0 is your wireless. And then ETH 0 is our wired connection. Now, I recommend you use a wired connection, like I said. So I'm going to be setting the IP address of the wired connection to this IP. So 192.168.0.74. You can set the wireless one to whatever uh, your router assigned it by default. But I'm specifically going to stick with this one for the uh, Ethernet. Once you've done that, you can just close out of the file with uh, control X. You'll press Y if you've modified it to just save the changes and you'll press enter. Now that you've done that, you need to restart your server again. So to do that, you can just type in sudo reboot and you'll get a disconnection and we'll just wait a couple seconds and reconnect. So we'll right click up in the corner and just do restart session. And now it'll say login as we can type in pi again and our password. And now we're reconnected. I'm just going to clear the terminal. And then now we can install pi VPN. So to do that, we're going to go to the website, which is right here. And we'll just copy the installation right there. And you can just right click into putty and it'll paste it in and we'll press enter. 
it'll run a quick update check just to make sure everything is good. And it looks like we're up to date, so it's going to continue with the install. Now I'm just downloading all the dependencies that PyVPN needs, so we're going to wait for that to finish. And it looks like it's done, so we can just press enter. It'll say that it needs a static IP. We've already set that up, so we can just press enter. And we can choose an interface. So I'm going to be using Ethernet. It's already selected, so I'm just going to press tab and do OK. And those current network settings are correct. Those are the ones that we just set up. If for any reason they're not the same as the ones you just edited in that conf file, you can just press no and it'll let you type it in. So that is good for me. We'll press OK. Default gateway. This is the IP address of your router. Uh, if you don't know how to find this, you can just go into command prompt and do IP config forward slash all and find your network adapter, which this one's mine, and default gateway right here. That is correct though, so we're just going to click OK. It'll ask once again if the settings are correct, and we can just click Yes. We'll click OK. That's fine, so we'll press OK again. And then it just wants us to install unattended upgrades. Since we are going to be port forwarding, this machine is open to the public internet, uh, so it's good to have this on for security updates. We'll click OK, and then we'll say Yes. For the protocol, we're going to use UDP. Click OK, and then you're going to choose the port for your VPN. 1194 is the default for most VPN connections. You can use 443 if you have a reason to believe that whatever Wi-Fi hotspot you're going to be going to uh, might have this port blocked, uh, so 443 is a good alternative. Um, I'm going to choose a completely different port. This is just for me, uh, but I would do 1194 or 443. It's up to you. It'll ask if it's correct. So that looks correct to me, so I'm going to click yes. And then it wants to know if we're going to do OpenVPN 2.4. Yes, uh, all of our clients should be using this, so we can press yes, it's more secure. And then certificate, that is a good size. We're just going to press OK again. And as you can see, this is very forward uh, in terms of an install. And then now, will it use a public IP to connect or a DNS name? So if you have a static IP address, you can use a public IP. If you do not have a static IP address, meaning your IP address changes from day to day or at once every couple weeks, you want to use a DNS entry. I'll have a video link below showing you how to set up a dynamic DNS for your router. So that way, if for any reason your IP address changes, it'll always stay up to date and you won't have any connection issues. I have a static IP, so I'm just going to leave the public IP and press OK. Now you can choose your DNS provider. Google is fine. Again, I'm just going to do Cloudflare. Uh, it's personal preference for me. And OK. Custom search domain, no. And then the install is complete. It tells us what we need to run to create our profiles. So we can just press OK. And it's going to ask for a reboot. We'll say yes. And OK. We'll get the error again, that's normal. We'll just press OK, and then we'll wait a couple seconds and reconnect. So we'll right click and restart session. Log in again, and I'll just clear the terminal again. So now that the terminal's clear, we can create our profile. So to do this, we can just type in PyVPN add and press enter. Now to ask for the name of the client, I'm just gonna type in Shane Laptop. And it'll ask how long the certificate should last. 1,080 days is fine. I'm just changing it to 365. Personal preference. We'll enter a password for the client. And it'll have us verify it again. And it will create the profile. So I'm going to create one more just for my phone, just to show. And I'll do Shane Mobile. We'll do 365 days again and a password. And there we go. So both are created and now we just need to get those files to use our VPN. So I'm just gonna minimize PuTTY and this is where FileZilla comes into play. So I'm just gonna open up FileZilla and 
it will have us connect. So our host is just gonna be the IP address that we set for our putty, which in my case is the 0 0.74. Username is pi, and password is the password of your user account, which should be Raspberry by default. Port 22 and click quick connect. And then now if we go down here, we should see an OVPNs folder. We're just gonna double click on that. And there are our two configuration files that we created. I'm just going to download both of them, so I'll just highlight them and drag them over to my desktop. Now we can close out of FileZilla, and then we just need to launch the OpenVPN GUI. Once you launch it the first time, you will get this error message. That's OK. We can just press OK. And then now if we go down into the taskbar, you can see the OpenVPN icon. We're just going to right click on it and click Import File. And we just want to navigate to where it is saved. In my case, my profiles are on my desktop, so I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm just gonna click Shane Laptop. File has been imported successfully, and now we're gonna press OK. Before we can connect, we need to port forward the port that we assigned in the installation on our router to the IP address of our Pi. It's different for every router. I'll have a link in the description kind of showing you the general idea for your router. Um, it's a resource that just kind of pushes it all into one. Uh, don't click any of the ads or links or any of that stuff on that website. Just follow the steps based on your router. Um, for mine, though, I'm going to go to my router. And now that I'm at my router, I just went and found the port forwarding section. It's probably going to be in an advanced tab of your router. Just search for port forwarding. Um, and then once you get there, you'll just create add a service or create new port forward, whatever it says for your router. And you're just going to name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it OpenVPNs tutorial just because it's there uh, service type TCP or UDP uh, in this case we did UDP for our connection so you'll click UDP and then the server IPv4 address is going to be the IPv4 of the server that you set up your static IP for being the Raspberry Pi so in my case that one was 192.168.0.74 and then your start port is going to be the port that you set up to use for OpenVPN connections by default it was 1194 uh, or 443 unless you changed it to something else um, you'll just put that port in and then just click save I've already done that as you can see I have a connection right here and it's pointing to my Pi and then port forwarding is enabled now that you've done that all you have to do is just go over to your OpenVPN uh, client right click and press connect it'll ask for the password that you created when you were uh, making the profile so I'm going to type that in, it'll give you some messages, and then in a little bit, we're connected. As you can see, the icon goes green, and if we hover over, it says we are connected to Shane Laptop and when we were connected since. So that's basically how to set it up. Uh, I'm just going to show you how to do it on an iPhone real quick, uh, in case you wanted to know. It's super easy to set up, and it takes literally like three minutes or less. So you'll plug your iPhone into your computer. Make sure you have the OpenVPN uh, app installed on your phone. And then once it's plugged in, you can open up iTunes. As you can see, my device shows up in the top corner. We'll click on it, and then we'll click on File Sharing. Next, you'll click on OpenVPN, and you'll scroll down and click Add File. Now you'll navigate to where you saved your OVPN profile. In my case, it's on my desktop, Shane Mobile. We'll click open and then we'll click done and as you can see on our device it shows the profile available for import we're just going to click add and you can rename it to whatever you want i'm just going to rename it real quick and you have the option to save your private key password so you don't have to enter it every time i'm not going to do that this time and we'll just click add You'll get a prompt, you'll just click allow, and then it'll ask for your passcode. And now it is available. You just tap on the toggle switch, it'll have you enter your password for the profile, and press OK. And as you can see, we are now connected. And to prove that this works, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect from the VPN, and if I go over to my web browser, as you can see, I'm able to access my Proxmox server. I'm on Wi-Fi, so it's a local IP address. And it's pretty normal as if I was just from home. But if I want to do it on data, 
I go to data and I refresh the page and it times out. Nothing's loading. As you can see the bar, I have no connection. So I'm going to go back into the OpenVPN, enable it. And as you can see, I'm connected to the VPN now. If I go back to the web browser, it loads instantly and I'm able to tap on details and everything loads nice and smooth. I can view my machine and I'm still on data. I am not connected to Wi-Fi. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. That's how you can connect to your home network from anywhere. I'll leave some links down below to the GitHub repository if you have any questions about the hardware side or run into any issues. And if you have any issues you want to ask me about, you can leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to reply to them and see if I can help you out. Anyway, guys, hope this video helped you and I'll catch you guys in the next one.